Hey guys, thanks for watching Beyond Science, it's Mike Chen. Over the course of history, there are many amazing individuals who left a permanent mark in a multitude of human pursuits, particularly in the arts and sciences. And then after the development of piercing bladed weapons like the sword around the Bronze Age a few thousand years ago, a special few then went on to master a special art, the art of sword fighting, and emerged as legendary warriors whose skills, wisdom, and achievements earned them a place in the annals of history. Some of these, the world's greatest swordsmen earned their reputation for their distinctive fighting styles, for winning every duel they fought, for killing multiple opponents during a full-scale battle or war, and for coming up with their own school of combat whose teachings still ring true today. So in this video, we're going to talk about seven of the most legendary swordsmen to have ever lived. We'll start off with number one, William Marshall. William was once the first Earl of Pembroke, but he was also a skilled swordsman who was eulogized as the best knight that ever lived. He began training as a knight at a young age and made a lucrative living by winning dangerous tournaments, having purportedly bested 500 knights during his entire career as a competitor. His early life as a skilled fighter inspired the 2001 film A Knight's nice Tale, which starred the late actor Heath Ledger. In the 12th and 13th century, he went on to serve several kings of England, including Henry II, the young King Henry, Richard the Lionheart, John Lackland, and Henry III. And his vast experience in battle is said to be crucial in defeating the French during the Battle of Lincoln in 1217. Next, Minamoto no Yoshitsune, a military commander who has served under the Minamoto clan during Japan's feudal era, Minamoto no Yoshitsune is regarded as one of the greatest samurai warriors in history. He won several battles during the historical Genpei War and is credited for helping his half brother Minamoto no Yoritomo establish his influence and power. As an extremely skilled swordsman, Yoshitsune is remembered for his duel against a legendary warrior monk named Benkei. After successfully defeating the six foot seven inch monk, Benkei became Yoshitsune his right-hand man. Eventually, Yoritomo grew suspicious of his brother, who was favored and awarded many titles by the emperor for his many achievements. The relationship between these two brothers completely deteriorated, and Yoshitsune was eventually betrayed by an ally due to Yoritomo's manipulations, forcing the legendary warrior to seek an honorable death by committing seppuku. However, some believe that Yoshitsune actually escaped Japan and managed to become a conqueror in mainland Asia with a new identity, as check this out, the Mongolian ruler Genghis Khan. Number three, Charlemagne. Also known as Charles the Great, Charlemagne went down in history for his many achievements as the legendary king of the Franks, the king of the Lombards, as well as the emperor of the Romans during the early Middle Ages. He was also heralded as the father of Europe for unifying the majority of Western Europe and for spurring a period of cultural revival, which came to be known as the Carolingian Renaissance. He was a scholar who found great value in learning, but to his enemies, he was a warrior they feared for his sword fighting skills his wit, and also his cruelty as a conqueror. During his reign, Charlemagne was frequently engaged in battles, leading his own elite team of warriors while he wielded his legendary sword, Droyos. Number four, Fiori de Liberty. This knight from the 14th century was an Italian fencing master credited for writing one of the oldest surviving martial arts manuals on sword fighting titled Fior di Battaglia, or Flower of Battle. According to Fiori himself, he was a natural martial artist that learned from several combat masters from the Italian and German regions of the Holy Roman Empire. He also wrote about his encounters with many false master swordsmen, and on five different occasions, he had to fight these masters in defense of his own honor. These duels were fought with deadly long swords and with very little protection, but he claimed to have won each one without incurring any kind of injury. He also trained several students who went on to become legendary master swordsmen and mercenary leaders themselves. Next, Kamizumi Nobutsuna, a famous samurai during the Sengoku period of Japan. Kamizumi Nobutsuna is credited for establishing the Shinkage Ryu School of Combat. He had learned from three different schools of combat before he applied his sword fighting knowledge to create the Shingake Rai, which he created after learning from three other different schools of combat. Nobusuna spent a major part of his life as a general fighting for several lords, including Nagano Narimasa, the governor of Kozuki. In working for Nagano, he gained the reputation of being one of the 16 spears in Nagano house, having distinguished himself for being the best spearman of Kozuki. After he developed Shinkage Ryu, Nobusuna got to demonstrate his combat art to the Shogun, Ashi Kaga Yoshitiru, and the Shogun even praised it for being an unparalleled school of combat in all of Japan. Next, Johannes Lichtenauer. This German fencing master from the 14th century has gained renown for significantly influencing the fencing tradition in Germany. Born in Lichtenauer, Germany, Lichtenauer went on to become an excellent swordsman and mastered the art of sword by traveling all over Europe to learn straight from the great master swordsmen who lived during his time. His students managed to preserve his teachings by coming up with a poem so that they did not risk disclosing the secrets of their master 
masters fencing knowledge to outsiders. But by the 16th century, parts of these verses were featured in a manuscript about German style fencing. This German fencing master is also credited for being one of the originators of other disciplines like armored dueling, fighting on horseback, and even wrestling. Finally, Miyamoto Musashi, celebrated as Japan's greatest swordsman to ever have lived. The legendary Musashi Miyamoto is even famous today in and outside of Japan for his notable triumphs in many duels and his distinctive fighting style using double-bladed weapons. This Japanese master swordsman and ronin is said to have an undefeated record of winning 60 duels, including an epic battle in the 1600s with legendary swordsman Sasaki Kojiro, who was then known as the demon of the western province. During his fight with Kojiro, Musashi successfully defeated and killed his opponent with, get this, a wooden sword. I think this guy was Kenshin. Anyway, his skills did not escape the notice of the Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiaki, who considered the warrior as unrivaled under heaven. Musashi is also credited for founding the Nintendo Ryu style swordsmanship and for authoring the Book of Five Rings. Nothing to do with the Lord of the Rings, but this is an insightful text on Japanese swordsmanship that also teaches about philosophy, war tactics, and combat strategy. Aside from his skills in sword fighting, he is also an accomplished artist, earning considerable recognition for his calligraphy artworks and classic ink paintings that manage to survive even to this day. So on this channel, I did, I did a lot of video about swords because many legendary swords are regarded as objects of pride and have been featured today in, in many written works and films and TV and of course on my channel, but largely because of the epic warriors that wielded them. And the ones I have just mentioned in this video are just a few of many great swordsmen from our distant past that we still place in high regard even to this day because we're still fascinated by swords. Maybe that's why when I bought my first house, which is kind of creepy if you've never seen it, Go check out my vlog channel. Uh, I got two swords and I kind of don't really know how to use them. Anyway, guys, hopefully you like this video. Also, I just want to let you know that we did release a new issue of Beyond Science Magazine for this month. In this issue, we're going to talk about how to travel in the astral plane. We're going to talk about Lilith, possibly the first woman to ever exist on the surface of the earth. I mean, is she a goddess, a dark deity, or a demon? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the mysterious legend of the white giants, the race talked about by many different tribes around the world, and much, much more. So if you are interested in these topics, click on this link right here. I also have that link for you in the description box below to get your 30-day free trial of the Beyond Science magazine. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.